It is a way of thinking in which you don't simply accept all arguments and conclusions you are exposed to, but rather have an attitude involving questioning such arguments and conclusions. Well, I just want to go along. I don't want to cause any issues. I don't know why we do it that way, but that's the way we do it. See, that's what happens in families. Why do I vote that way? Because we've always voted that way. Why do we do this? Because we've always done that. But when someone else comes along and says, well, but, but why? I don't know. That's just the way it's always been. So you have a thinker talking to someone who doesn't want to think that just wants to go with the flow. Listen, I just simply titled this um, Think for a Change. And we're going to talk about the mind of Christ. We're going to talk about critical thinking. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 13 through 16, when we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. In other words, folks, when you hear the word, if you're not right with God, you're not born again, you're not a spiritual being, you're not a, have, you don't have eternal life living in you, none of this, this seems foolish. How many of y'all have shared things with unbelievers and they just like, what the heck, you know, I don't understand. Come on, like, they just think you're crazy, right? So this is why, because it's not for them. And those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. Now, I probably read this scripture, I don't know how many times. I probably quoted, prayed that, you know, my children, people have the mind of Christ. I prayed for God to give me the mind of Christ. But I've never really got into exactly what that means. It's just easy to say. In fact, I text one of my friends who's like a Bible scholar. He's like a theologian. And I said, hey, what does the mind of Christ mean to you? And he said, great question. I've never thought about it. So how many of y'all prayed that over you? I have the mind of Christ. Anybody? Yeah, so, so we're going to get into that in a little bit. But I want to I tell you what Adolf, Adolf Hitler said. He said, what good fortune for governments that the people do not think? I mean, think about it. Let me read it again. What good fortune for governments that the people do not think? See, people today don't want to think. They don't want to question. They don't want to question. They just want to go with the flow or be told what to do. See, we take our cues from our environment, especially other people, on how to act. We use the decisions of others as a mental shortcut to navigate our lives. In other words, people today don't like thinking because how many of y'all know thinking takes some effort? And, and, so, and so we're called, if we have the mind of Christ, to think, to question, to evaluate. So what happens to so many people when you get somebody that's willing to question willing to walk through the process, willing to try to make it make sense, it freaks people out because why do they just go with the flow? Yeah. You know, my mom and dad used to tell me this, especially my dad, if, if everybody, if the barn was burning and everybody was running into a burning barn, would you run into it? I mean, as a kid, you're like, well, I, let, me, let me think about that for a moment. <laughs> if everybody ran off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff? I mean, as a kid, you might say, well, it might be fun. I mean, is there water there? I mean, what's... <laughs> In other words, we're trained to go with the flow, to not question. And I don't know about you, but my wife will tell you, I question everything. And so when you see me rant, it's me questioning, why are we doing this? And then here's the answer to people, we're just, you know, they're just trying to keep us safe. And I'm like, no, but there ain't no man can keep me safe. You can go out and die right after you leave this service. So if you're not right with God, you should get right with God. 
But only God can really keep us safe. It's his protection. And so I, I process this, and, and we need to learn to process. We need to learn, to learn to challenge, to think critically. Because if we have the mind of Christ, it's got to be there for a reason. Albert Einstein said it this way. We cannot solve problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Martin Luther King Jr. said the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of a true education. Aristotle said it this way, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. See, it is more important than ever that we as people, that we as Christians learn the skill of critical thinking. See, too many people today just float by and let life happen to them without stopping to ask why. This is the key to thinking critically is to be able to ask why. My son, Steve Jr., he, when he was little, he always talked about himself in third person. Stevie wants this, Stevie wants that. Stevie wants to go over here. We're like, man, what? what? But what he would do all the time is ask why. So, so we would, we'd be talking to somebody and, and, and he'd say why and you'd answer the question and, and then he'd ask you why about that and he just would go on. Finally got to the point because we said. <laughs> because you know, you can ask why forever, but you know, if I had to go back there, I would probably continue to let him ask why and just say I don't have the answer. Because we're trained not to ask why. We're, twa- we're trained not to question. And when you get around people that do question and do think, it freaks people out because they're just, well, they're just, they're just causing trouble. And, that, and we, so we have to learn. We have to ask why. To stop and evaluate the things that life throws at us and how we can best respond to them, according to the word of God, we need to possess the mind of Christ. You know, I'm an avid reader, I read all the time. I was up all night, last night, all day today, I slept one hour, because I'm watching the returns. I tried to sleep, and then I'm like, oh man, I can't, I'm like, I'm, so I'm back on. But I ask questions. We need to ask why. I, I, I wanna know why we do what we do. So I'm just gonna take this because it's real, real for us and I'm not knocking what I'm gonna say one way or the other. I'm not taking a side, I'm just, I'm just gonna show you. We question it, so when the, when the government says you need to wear a mask, I ask why? Well, they said the science. Well, when you start reading and you read a lot, there is no science. So now they don't talk about science, they talk about the data. So I ask why do you want me to wear it? And, and I think it's a good question. Yeah. Well, it might, maybe, could help you. Yeah. I mean, the, every study, that's what they say. Everyone concludes with that. Yeah. So then, because that didn't work, because too many people are saying, why? Because yeah. that doesn't work for me. That's not a good enough reason. Well, how about this one? If you wear it, it doesn't protect you, it protects someone else. I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense in my mind because if it doesn't protect me, how can it protect you? I mean, I'm just thinking through it. And I'm, listen, I'm not knocking it. I'm not telling, I mean, if you need to, work, you, you do what you think is best. I'm just, I'm just teaching you how to, I'm just talking about how to process. So then they say, well, if you were one and I were one, it protects us both. And then I read the study, or the, what, it's not even a study, it's just people making up stuff because they really don't know, and they said, this is our best answer to this right now. And they said, you have, if you were one and I were one, you have a 30% chance 
of not being exposed to COVID if you have COVID. <laughs> and, and I'm not mocking, listen, I'm not mocking anybody. This is a, you do what you think is best in here and when you live life. But I'm saying, this is how I think. I process all this and I'm like, even that concludes it might help you 30%. Well, for my mind, the way I think and process, that's not good enough. So how about this? If you don't wear one, you'll get fined. That's not good enough either. And so we have to learn to think. For some of you, when I said that even online, you're like, see, just wear the mask. But, but, tell me, if you can scientifically show me where that is, that, that is really the answer, because if it was the answer, why is the rates in every state going crazy? And here's what I want you to know, and I'm not doing that for applause, I'm just saying that's critical thinking, and the reason I use that because people fight over that. I mean, people fight, people think they can walk up and talk to you and they don't, strangers? I mean, it's a, they've been emboldened somehow to do that, and, and then when you ask them, well, why do you wear it? Here's their answer, because I was told to wear it. I said, oh. Because here's what we know about people. We're, we're not rule breakers. Most of us want to keep the rules. We want to keep the laws. I mean, except, I mean, some laws are just ungodly, and just for the, the speed limit is just one of those. Just kidding. But we just, want, we just want to go the flow. We don't want to question why, how come. To stop and evaluate the things that life throws at us and how we can best respond to them according to the word of God possessing the mind of Christ. Life throws all kinds of stuff at us. And some of you are trying to get out of your situation the same way you got in it. That's why you can't get out. You need to think, what do I need to do different? I know how I got here, <laughs> kind of, but what do I need to do to change so I don't end up here again? Yes. See, I think God wants us to think, because if he didn't, he wouldn't have given us the mind of Christ. So critical thinking is essentially putting God's wisdom and knowledge into action in our lives. See, God has given us the mind of Christ. What does that mean? It's the Greek word nous, N-O-U-S. It describes everything in the realm of the intellect, including one's will, emotions, and the ability to think, reason, or decide. So the mind of Christ, that's what it means. It gives us the ability to think, reason, or decide. And whoever or whatever controls a person's mind ultimately has the power to dictate the affairs of the outcome of that person's life. So what, what controls your mind? Because whoever or whatever controls a person's mind ultimately has the power to dictate the affairs, the outcome of that person's life. See, if a person allows their mind to be overrun with panic and fear, they're putting fear in charge of their lives. But yet my God says, the word of God says, I don't have the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. But I have the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. We have the Holy Spirit in us. See, even when you get into this, if you're an emotional person, how many of y'all know those people? Anybody? Like they're emotional. You just, you just never know what it's going to be. And if you don't like being an emotional person, you need to think through the process and say, what do I need to think about or change so I'm not so emotional all the time? And I'm not letting my emotions take charge of my life. Yeah. 
Mind is to think, means to think, to consider, or to ponder intense reflection. Philippians 4, 7 says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, this word understand here is the same Greek word noose that's used with the mind of Christ. It's the ability to think, to reason, to understand, to comprehend. It also depicts the mind as the source of all human emotions. And God said, when you honor his word, when you do what he says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything to do with the, the ability to think, to reason, to understand, to comprehend, and override our emotions. In other words, God's peace will come in, and man, our intellect's like, man, this is going crazy, this is happening, and God's peace will experience it even when everything is going crazy. But it's the same word. And so your mind controls your emotions. And if you can't control your emotions, then you have to ask yourself, who is or what is? That's why people say, they did this and I just had to do that. No, you didn't have to do that. You just got out of control. You could have just walked away. I mean, the Bible does say a soft answer turns away wrath. The mind of Christ. Do you want it? Do you have it? How do I get it? See, this word when we talk about the mind of Christ, emphatically depicts the mind as the central control center for a human being. Now, I love this statement. Therefore, it it was understood that the condition of the mind is what determined the condition of one's life. In other words, if you're not thinking, if you're not processing, if you're not questioning, Then, then, then you're not exercising the ability God's given you. And I don't mean to do it in a derogatory way. I don't mean to be, you know, combative or fighting. I'm just saying, can, can, can you tell me why we do it that way? Yeah. You know, people come here from other churches and they say, you know, the church I used to go to, they didn't pass buckets. <laughs> they just put a box in the back. I said, oh. And I give him that look, I'm like, okay. So what are you saying? Well, I think you should do that. No, no, this is our church. And, and then I tell him this. I said, biblically, there's only one thing that God ever talks about how to receive tithes and offerings. That's to go to your house and pick it up. <laughs> yeah. However else we do it, it's just our preference. So I'm like, well, so great. We got boxes all over the foyer. Go drop it in there. If that makes you happy. I mean, it's it's amazing to me how people get caught up in this. And my mind goes, are you serious? That's that's what you, I mean, 20 people just got saved. God just helped some folks. And you're only concerned with how we receive the offering? And here's what I know about those people. They don't give in the offering. It always works out that way. You're not giving anyway. (laughs) Think for a change. Therefore, it was understood that the condition of the mind is what determined the condition of one's life. You know, we have this service at 630. And I've I've had pastors, because whether you realize this or not, and I'm just not bragging, but... We, I've, I've met some pastors. I was just with a, quite a few pastors. And they said, oh, you're the guy that has the midweek services. Because they're, they're amazed that we get this many people to come out on a midweek. Even in COVID, this is a pretty good crowd. And the East Campus, they just, they just say, man, how do you do it? So more churches are starting to talk about starting a midweek again. 
And they said, so how did you do it? And I said, oh, I don't know, man, just luck. <laughs> because I really don't want to tell them the story how we decided. They said, how did you decide on 6.30? So before we built this or why we were building this, we moved into our youth building, our YNU building. And I forgot this last night in the story, but, you know, Daniel McKay, one of my executives, he's, he wanted to make sure I got it right. Like, <laughs> Pastor Steve, just remember... And he goes, you don't have to say it, but I'm like, well, why did you tell me then? Because now, if I leave it out, it won't be, you know, at least I did it honestly. But we had services, if you, some of you remember, we had two Wednesday night services, 5.30 and 7. So we're sitting in a staff meeting when we're fixing to move in here. And we start talking about what time does the service have? Because before we went over there, the service was always at 7, and everybody else did it at 7. So we're having this meeting and we say, and I don't know who said it, say, guys, why do, we, why do we have the service at seven? And the answer was because everybody else did it at seven. And so we, we got in this conversation, it wasn't very spiritual, so maybe we should just do it at 6.30. Just because there's no real reason why you have to do it at seven. Now, we didn't understand all that would happen with that. So we decided, and I, this is, you know, these pastor guys are like, well, how did you come up and what? And it's like, well, here's the story. It's not very glamorous, but it is what it is. So we all decided, let's just do it at 630. No real reason. Let's just do it. And then we started dressing more casual on Wednesday nights. Because back when we first got here, we, you know, you had to wear slacks in the office, nice shirt. Now these guys wear jeans with holes in them. It's like, man, really? I mean, I, if I had holes in my jeans, it's because I played outside, played football or something, and went across the grass, and it just tore it. And then you had to go home and tell your mom, and your mom said, God, give me those. And she'd pull out the iron and pull out the patch, and you just get a patch. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, you just got the patch. And then everybody said, oh, you got holes in your jeans. I mean, it wasn't popular back then to have holes. Because if it was, we would just say, no, mom, don't touch it. Don't put the patch on. So we started dressing casual and more casual. And so here's what we found out for doing it at 6.30. People began to come up to me and said, thank you so much for doing it at 6.30. And I'm like, really? And they said, yeah, because when you did it at 7, I would get off work and I would go home, feed my kids, eat. And then I'm so comfortable. I'm like, I don't want to get, I really wanted to come to church, but I'm like, oh man, I'm so comfortable. And I get it. Because I used to do that too when I would work at UPS and was a, a member of Church on the Move in Tulsa. I would, I would get off work because you never knew what time you'd get off work at UPS. You just didn't know. It just, when your truck was empty, you were done. And so I would run home, take a quick shower, and then I'd be like putting on my tie because you wore a tie back then as I'm coming in the church. And then I ushered, so the head usher would say, I knew you'd make it. And he'd put me, and I said, always put me in the back. Because, some of you get this, because for the, that's the first time I would have sat all day. So I'd be back in the back, Pastor George would be up there preaching, and I'd be, you know, bobbing and weaving. <laughs> How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I hate when that happens. What's sad is when I see it on the front row. <laughs> I used to just go stand in front of them when they would do it. I'd just stand and preach right in front of them. I wouldn't move. <laughs> and then when they'd look up, I'd just be looking at them like, really, dude? I'm not the cure for insomnia. That's just the bottom line. <laughs> but anyway, so, so I would go, and, and, and so I sat in the back so I could get up and move so I wouldn't be disrespectful, just go to sleep. So I get it. I said, I never even thought about that. We just picked 630 because we just didn't, didn't know why we did it at 7. And then people say, thank you so much, man. I feel more comfortable now coming in my scrubs and my work clothes. I, mean, I just come from work, and now I feel comfortable because it's more relaxed. And then we put a great emphasis on it. I, I love this service. This is my favorite service of the whole week. Just to be honest with you. It's like the lady that was cooking a ham with her daughter. Right? Because we don't think. We don't question. So the little girl looked at her mom and, and she would cut the ends of the ham off and put it in the pan. So the little girl looked at her mom and said, Mom, why do you cut the ends of the ham off and put it in the pan? She goes, I don't know. Let's call your grandmother. 
So they called grandma. And she said the same thing. Mom, why did you cut off the end of the hems and put them in the pan? She goes, I don't know. Let me call my mom. So when she called her mom, she said, Mom, why did you cut off the ends of the ham and, and before you put it in the pan? She goes, because the ham was too big for the pan. <laughs> so she did it. The mom did it. The other mom did it. And the little girl finally asked the question, why do you do that? Well, they didn't know. They just kept doing it, even though the pan now is big enough for the whole ham. <laughs> and that's how a lot of us are living our lives. We're missing so much because we just want to go with the flow. We don't want to question anything. Proverbs 4, 5, and 9, get wisdom. Develop good judgment. You will not develop good judgment if you don't learn how to think and think critically. Don't forget my words or turn away from them. Don't turn your back on wisdom for she will protect you. Love her and she will guard you. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. If you prize wisdom, she will make you great. How many of y'all want to be great? How many already think you're great? Come on. So many humble people at Legacy Church. I'm going to applaud you. I think it's awesome you think you're great. I'd rather you think you're great than if you're no good nothing. So let me ask again, how many of y'all think you're great? Now look at CMO Ball, like, I'm great. If you prize wisdom, she'll make you great. Embrace her and she will honor you. She will place a lovely wreath on your head. She will pre present you with a beautiful crown. See, when you seek wisdom, you will be able to develop good judgment. But we have to learn to critically think or you'll never develop it. I read all the time, I question everything. My wife always says to me, you're just so rebellious. Like I'm going to the dentist tomorrow and, and they ask me a bunch of questions. And I'm like, are you serious? So I responded to the text and my wife said, just say no. I said, no, 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 no. So I said, why, are you, why do you want this info? And who, and who are you going to give it to? And by the way, my answer is no. <laughs> so I get this sweet response, Pastor Steve. I'm like, oh, no, man. <laughs> thank you for your, basically something like, thank you for your inquiry. It's just for our information only. And I'm like, because if you're going to give it to the state or governor, that ain't happening. That's not. Because I don't want them to have it. I don't want them to have any information on me. My whole phone is shut up. I can't even do Siri. I can't do that because, you know, they talk about tracking you with your phone. I'm like, you ain't tracking me. So people say, just use Siri. I said, Siri, shut off. And all those apps, things too, are shut off. You, ain't gonna, you don't get my location. You say, why are you like that? I don't know. See, I know I have a little bit of a rebel in me. I don't know about you, but I, I, I don't know if you do. And my wife used to say to me all the time, Steve, you're so rebellious. And she used to say it all the time to the point I started praying, God, I don't want to be rebellious. I mean, that's not a good thing. I mean, rebellion is as, as witchcraft. I'm like, I'm no witch or warlock. I don't cast spells. I don't do any of that. But I begin to really question because he said it so much. And, and I'm like, man, I, 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 God, I don't want to be rebellious. I guess I am rebellious. And then Cynthia and I went to a thing where we did the disc profile for the very first time. We live in Roswell. And... And when she did her disc, she was, if you know what it is, she was like a D, you, 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 you couldn't get any higher on the graph. Like any higher, she would have been off the graph. Seriously, I'm, I'm not kidding. And Sandy Culkin walked by me and said, you better be lucky your wife's not an angry D. And I didn't even know what that meant at the time. I said, why? He goes, because she would have ruined everything you ever did. I'm like, okay. But what we learned 
was I was a, at the time an ISC or SIC. I was sick. <laughs> but not COVID. But anyway, I was sick. I was sick. I don't know why I'm talking like that. But. So I was an SIC. So here's what we learned about our personality. It changed the way we function. Because we started thinking. Here, I thought I'm rebellious. I always thought she was like, like too much. I mean, seriously, she was like over the top, like Cynthia, stop. Like, you know, when people cross in front of you, she would never stop. She would just keep creeping. I'm like, stop the car. They're crossing and she would say, they can get by, I don't have to stop. Or if I would drive her someplace and I would park in the parking lot, she'd say, do you think you can get any farther away from the door? No, let me try. I mean, <laughs> and so now she don't say it because she knows as soon as she does, I go to the farthest. So we're going to take a walk, get some exercise. I mean, she was so tough that one day I tried to help her fold towels. We hadn't been married very long. I fold the towel and then I'd look over, I'd put it in a pile, I'd look over, and then she'd refold the towel and put it up. <laughs> so I folded another towel, put it over there. She, I said, I'm done. She goes, what do you mean? I said, I'm done, finished. She goes, what do you mean? I said, I will never help you fold another thing. She goes, but why? And I said, because you keep refolding what I folded. She goes, but you're not doing it right. Does anybody have these conversations? Like, yeah. I'm like, well, I did it the way. I mean, it worked. At least it was folded. So I just said, I'm done. Won't ever help you again. Never. Well, so now I, I know how to fold the towel her way. Just so, <laughs> I mean, I... I got it down now. I mean, but anyway, so we would go at it. And so we learned because we're willing to learn. And, and that's what happens when you critically think or you have the mind of Christ. He wants to teach. But you won't learn unless you ask or you question or you. And it doesn't mean like you have to question everybody, everything. But you question, okay, why did I do that? Why do they do that? Why do we have it here? What, what does this go on? So what we learned was when she would come to me and say things like, Steve, Let's go clean the garage. Well, I didn't know, but she meant like, get up and let's go clean the garage. It wasn't really a question. But my personality was like, okay, I'll help you in a few minutes. Let me finish doing what I'm doing. And then she would get mad. Fine, I'll just do it by myself. I'm like, what? I told you I would come. And then she would say, or she would do it more than once. Like, Steve. Would you help me clean the garage? I said, I'll be there a minute. And then she'd come back, Steve, would you help me clean the garage? And I'd say, give me a few. Steve, now I hate that. So what we learned about our personalities is if I want to bless her when she goes, let's go clean the garage, I'm like, yep, then let's go do it. <laughs> and what she learned about me was once she asked me once, don't keep asking me. Because my personality was the type, you asked me once, mm -mm, I don't know. You asked me a second time, never. I'm never gonna help you clean the garage. If you bug me the third time, it's never ever am I, just the way my personality, like don't, don't, no, you, you just, you, I already heard you once. Well, we learn, so what she does is she says it once and she leaves me alone. And then when she asks, I just say, okay, I'll go do it now. It's just, it's just better, it's more peaceful that way. And so, but what I'm saying is guys, if you're not willing to question or think, you're gonna be in the same rut even in your relationships. They're never gonna get any better because you're not asking yourself or asking any questions about, maybe if I do things a little different, it would be a little more peaceful. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we've got to learn. He's given us this mind, this intellect, the ability to reason, to think. He's given us a will and emotions. So critical thinking is the ob objective analysis and evaluation of an issue in order to form a judgment. What did I just read? Seek wisdom so you can have good judgment. To form a judgment is reasonable, or that's reasonable, reflective thinking that is focused on deciding what to believe or do. You know, the thing we've messed up with our kids is we don't let them ask enough questions sometimes. So the church as a whole loses their teenagers to these liberal colleges. Yeah. 
because most colleges are very liberal. Even the ones that aren't supposed to be liberal are liberal. And here's why we lose our kids, because they know what they believe, but they don't know why they believe it. Well, my mom just said, my dad just told me. It's like, if someone asked you, do you have the mind of Christ? And you said, yes. And then they said, well, what is it? I couldn't have answered that. I'd have said, I don't know, God gives us the mind. I, I, don't, I, I really couldn't have answered that real well. And so he gives us this mind to think. How can you properly think if you're not questioning or reflecting or thinking and deciding what to believe or do? A catchy way of defining critical thinking is deciding what's true and what you should do. What's true and what you should do. A very simple definition of critical thinking is simply thinking about thinking. How many of y'all know that to rethink is harder than thinking? Anybody figure that out? So if, if, you're, if you're, you know, you're a believer, you, 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 you're, you're praying, you're talking to God, you got, you're communicating with him, always have a pad or pencil or your phone handy when you wake up in the night, your note thing, to put down thoughts that come to you. Because here's what I struggle with. I have a thought and I'm like, man, I'll remember that, I don't need to write it down. And then I get going, I'm like, okay, what was that thought? And rethinking is harder than thinking. Because now I'm like, I can't get, what, what, what was that thought? So that's why you write down. So now people are talking to me sometimes. I said, listen, I'm not texting anybody. I'm just taking notes. Because I've learned about me. I, I don't want to rethink because it's too hard. I just want to think. So once I think, I put it down. Now I don't have to rethink. I just get to go read Amen. my thoughts. And so we just need to learn to think about what? About thinking. See, critical thinking means making reasoned or reasonable judgments that are logical and well thought out. It is a way of thinking in which you don't simply accept all arguments and conclusions you are exposed to, but rather have an attitude involving questioning such arguments and conclusions. Well, I just want to go along. I don't want to cause any issues. I don't know why we do it that way, but that's the way we do it. See, that's what happens in families. Why do I vote that way? Because we've always voted that way. Why do we do this? Because we've always done that. But when someone else comes along and says, well, but, but why? Well, I don't know. That's just the way it's always been. So you have a thinker talking to someone who doesn't want to think that just wants to go with the flow. How many of y'all have things in your family now that you're born again, you're serving God? I mean, you, we always have that uncle, that aunt, that person, come on, that makes everybody uncomfortable. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Like you don't know how to act in front of me. You're like, don't say that because then they'll go off, you know. And how many of you know that one of the things we, we try not to do is ever go up and ask them, why do you, why do, you do that? Or we never question our own families why we do what we do. I didn't even know I had a dysfunctional family. And here's what some of you don't know. That every one of us has some dysfunction. I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know. I'm, I look back and think, man, that was pretty dysfunctional. But we just got used to it. But then God gives us this mind to help us think. Help us question, help us process. See, every true believer has the mind of Christ. That's what we need to know. And I close with some of these thoughts. Those who have this mind are able to discern spiritual things. Remember, I read it. The natural man or unbeliever cannot understand or see. 
Why are you going to church again? Why are you doing that? Why do you serve? Why do you give? Why? Do you, why? What? When you have the mind of Christ and you're a true believer, you can see right and wrong. And if you have the mind of Christ, you can have good judgment. Have you met people that they're not like brainiacs, but they have such great judgment? They're just smart. They're maybe not book smart, but they're smart. They just have a lot of common sense. They just have good judgment. How many of you have ever had poor judgment? <laughs> that was an easy one. Not me too. We all have. But I'd rather have good judgment than poor, bad judgment. And it comes when we understand what God's given us. I close with this thought. We receive by faith this mind at salvation. Having the mind of Christ is the same as being indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Both are attained through faith at the moment of salvation. When you're born again, God gives you the mind of Christ. Not to sit by and go with the flow and never question things. But to learn to think through the process. God, why do, I, why do we do this? Or, you know, how can I change this? I mean, how, you know, God, I'm dealing with this and I, I keep finding myself in the same place. I mean, it may take me a little longer to get there, but I always end up in this place. It's like we're a hamster on a wheel. We're running, but we're not going anywhere. And that's how so many lives are. Because they never stop to ask God for wisdom. And God, help me to think so I don't keep running on this wheel going nowhere. Or end up back here. How many of y'all know, how many of y'all I'm talking about? You just, you just always seem to end up somewhere in the same place situation some of you that have been married a few times what you'll end up saying is why do I keep marrying the same person they look different maybe a different name but they act the same way well the reason you do that is because you're attracted to that and you need to ask yourself why am I attracted to that something that doesn't bless me but that That'll make you think. And it'll make you do self-evaluation on yourself so you can develop good judgment even for your own self. The Bible says examine yourself so God doesn't have to judge you. So what do I need to do different? What do I need to do different at work? What do I need to do different in my home? What do I need to do different with my friends? What do I need to do different in the church? Why is it everywhere I go people come against me? And where I go, this happens. Well, stop and think through it. Think for a change. And say, okay, what am I doing? What is the thing? What, what's going on? Because here's what I know about victims. They hate being victims. And victims will say, I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. Well, when you're saying it like that, you're a victim. You're trying to convince somebody that you're not. But victims always blame someone else. And if God gave me this mind, and he did, if you're born again and right with God, he gave you a mind. To discern what's right and wrong. That's what he gave you. He gave you that mind. So when you read the word, it's like, man, I need to start doing this. Or... Is the word of God not allowed to change your mind? Because for a lot of people, it doesn't change anything. So why did he give it to us? So we could tell anybody how many times I've read through the Bible? I don't even think, I mean, if you want to read through the Bible, that's great. I think it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. But if you're not getting anything out of it and you're just reading it like a history book, just to say I read through it, that's not what this book is about. So I'd rather you study it. 
find a scripture that kind of speaks to you and go, go in and find out what it means. I'll, I'll do another message on this next week. Because I, I, do think, I do think it's important to think, to question. Not, again, not derogatory, not like, how come you do this? It's more like, can we sit down and reason together? I'm just trying to understand. Because here's what we know about human beings. You're against what you don't understand. And you don't even know why you're against it. You just don't understand it, so it's, it's not good. Same way with salvation. So many people say, I'm right with God. Really? How do you know? Well, because I mean God, we're good. No, that's not an answer. You know, God knows me. We just, we just, we're cool. You know. And the way you know you're right with God is if you've submitted your life to the Lord Jesus. Because you can't have a relationship with God. You can't be bros with God unless you come through Jesus. So the question is that I'm asking you to think for a moment. Are you really right with God? Have you submitted your will to his with the thought that, God, I know I'll make mistakes, but man, I, I really do want to do what you want me to do. I do want to think your thoughts. I do want the mind of Christ. I do want good judgment. Yeah. If you're online or in here and you say, Pastor, would you pray with me? I've never really given God my heart. I prayed prayers, but never really have I even known to pray a prayer to ask Jesus to be Lord of my life with the thought that I need to submit myself to his lordship, his leadership. His will be done, not mine any longer. And a preacher, that's a hard task. I know it is, but that's the attitude you got to come with. Yeah. Now, you'll make mistakes, you'll falter, you'll, you'll, you'll blow it. But you can always come back to God. I don't want to blow it. Amen. Thank you for forgiving me. Here we go again. Yeah. So it's on you. Or it's on you online. God wants to help us and bless us. Seeing some of our thoughts go, well, God will never bless me. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. See, that's not the mind of Christ. That's the enemy controlling your whole life. That's the devil. That's not God. That's him trying to keep you away from God because he knows if you ever get a glimpse of how good he really is, he'll lose you forever and you'll be an enemy to him. You, you'll be, and you'll be better off in life. How you think is so important. If that's you in the powerful name of Jesus with every head bowed, online, if you're, just be still for a moment if you would. Even if you're by yourself, and just a moment of reverence. If you say, Pastor, would you pray with me? I'm ready to come home. I need to get my life right. I really do. Or, Pastor, would you pray with me? I've never really given my heart to the Lord. Not like, not like I know to. I want to know that I'm right with him. I do want the mind of Christ. I want the Holy Spirit living in me. And the thing about God, he never condemns or shames. He's always encouraging, trying to lead you to get right. Because if you keep doing the same things you've always done, you're always going to get the same results. So maybe you take a different step of faith and say, God, I'm going to humble myself before you this day. I'm going to call on your name and you're going to save my life and that's what I need. If that's you in the powerful name of Jesus, in the house, online, and you say, preacher, would you pray with me? Real quick, no hesitation. I'm going to ask you to do one simple thing just so I know if I'm praying for anybody. And online, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to be able to say, God, I don't care. I want you in my life. If that's you in Jesus' name, right where you're seated, and you say, Pastor, include me in your prayer. Right now, in Jesus' name, would you just lift your hand up all over this place? Thank you. God bless 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 you, sir. Who else is I look at? God bless you. God bless you. Who else? Are you guys helping me up here? As I look across the top. Is there anybody else up there that says, Preacher, God bless you. I see your hand way up there. God bless you. I see your hands, guys. Anybody else? Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. God loves people. Just step out in faith and trust them. Quit worrying about what people will think or 
Man, will he really love me? Will he really save me? The answer is yes. Anybody else before we close? We're going to pray together. So many. Anybody else? Thank you, sir. God bless you. Anybody else? Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, thank you. God bless you. Father, thank you so much. I pray for each one that they'll never be the same because of you, because of your love, your mercy. And, and tonight when they get right with you or they get born again for the first time or they come home and say, God, I want you in my life. By believing in their heart and confessing with their mouth the Lord Jesus, that you'll fill them with your Holy Spirit and you'll give them the mind of Christ. We receive it at the same time. So bless each one, Father, in Jesus' name. If you lifted your hand, I want to lead you in a prayer. And I want everybody in here to pray. If you're by yourself online, I want you to pray this out loud. If you're with a group, just know that they're for you. They'll pray with you. But I want you to pray it out loud. The Bible says we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths. Would you pray this prayer with me? And if you lifted your hand, pray with all your heart. I'm going to lead you to Christ. He's the only Savior. Would you pray this with me? Would you pray, Father, I choose to believe in Jesus. And I believe he's your son. And I believe he is Lord of all. Jesus, be Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. I choose to believe in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Let's thank the Lord, church, if you would.